Okay, welcome fourth graders to the erosion and deposition uh, test review. We're going to be going over a lot, so hopefully you have your notebooks and you're following along at home and you are ready to go. Okay, well, where to start here? First of all, let's talk about deposition. Okay, well, actually, no, I take that back. Let's talk about the difference between erosion and weathering, okay, what we talked about in class. Now, weathering is the actual tearing down of the rock, okay? It's the chewing away, it's the breaking down of the rock, okay? Either by wind or by water, okay? It's the actual breaking down of the rock. That's weathering. Erosion is the moving or the transporting of the rock that was just broken down, okay? So don't get that confused. Erosion is the moving of the weathered rock, Weathering is the actual breaking down of the rocks, okay? Um, let's talk about some of the ways that uh, our land can be weathered. Remember, weathering is one of the ways that our land changes forms. Mountains are created and torn down. Valleys are made, like the Grand Canyon is made because of flowing water. Our land is transformed by the combination of erosion and weathering. Okay, some ways that weathering can happen. Here is the water. Remember, water is made up of atoms, which is tiny little things of matter. We talked about even though atoms are really super small, if you were tiny enough, you could actually lean up against one. So you can picture water like a whole bunch of tiny little BBs, ping, 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 constantly chipping away at the rock here. Okay, so water is one way. You can see the rock is having like a little half circle there. Another way is by wind, okay? You can see the tornado here is sweeping through the valley and picking up stuff. We talked about in class how the smaller the sediments are or the rocks, the easier they are to get picked up because they're light, they're small, and so the wind is gonna be able to pick up those rocks, okay? Also, the stronger the wind, the more rocks and the bigger the rocks, the wind is going to be able to pick up. For example, if you look at our picture here, the 70 mile an hour wind is going to be able to pick up a lot more rocks than the 40 mile an hour wind. My breath cannot pick up a car, okay? But a tornado, if it was cruising through like a farm, would be able to pick up a tractor and farm animals, all right? So the size of the wind and how strong the wind's blowing and also the size of the rocks or whatever the object is, is going to determine how much is getting picked up and what's going to get left behind, all right? Um, let's see here, moving along. One of the main ways that uh, land is weathered is by moving water. If you look at the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon is basically being carved into by water. For example, if you look at your, your uh, notebook over here, you can see that the rushing water, remember this is kind of like a behind view of the water that's going this way, okay? But because this is a two-dimensional white whiteboard, it's kind of hard to show the water going that way, okay? So the, basically the water is cruising through and it's cutting into and carving into the rock. So you can see in step one, the water is flowing through, it's carving. Remember, water is made up of a whole bunch of those little atom BBs, okay? It's slicing through, and it's 13 feet deep. I don't know, let's say 15 years later, the same water keeps on carving. And at this point now, the, uh, the trench is 18 feet deep, or the river, whatever you want to call it, okay? And that's because, once again, the water is scraping the bottom. Okay, so we've talked about flowing water, erosion, eroding. Let's move on to um, deposition, okay? Basically what happens is the rain comes down and it hits the top of a mountain. Now as the water, the streams, the rivers go down the mountain, it's going to be picking up small little rocks or sediments. It's going to be scraping other rocks and breaking those into pieces and picking up more rocks and sediments, okay? So the uh, river continues to flow down the mountain. It's still carrying all the little sediments or rocks that it picked up along the mountain. And let's say it drops it off at the edge of the river or up against a sandy shore. 
the dropping off of sediments is called deposition. Okay, and we talked about like when you go to a, a bank, you deposit something, which basically means you're dropping it off at the bank. That's where deposition came for. You can see there, it says deposit. That's because it's dropping stuff off at uh, wherever it may be, like the edge of a, a river or up against a sandy shore, okay? Um, moving on here to the Dust Bowl, all right? This is an event that happened like in the 1930s. And what was basically happening is farmers were overusing the land. They were planting, digging up, planting, and digging up. So after a while, the soil, because of all the digging up, became really loose. And so there was a whole bunch of small little bits of dirt and rock on the surface. Well, what happened is um, a big wind came through, and it picked up all of the dust and the light, small rocks that were on the surface because of all the farming that was done there. And it created this massive dust bowl, okay? It was so thick that animals died. We talked about in class how the baby um, Bambi breathed its last breath in this dust bowl. <sighs> okay? So, anyway, animals died. That's just for the kids at home so they can start laughing. Uh, all right, now we talked about deposition. Now let's talk about different ways that farmers have come up with to try to keep our land from eroding, right? One of them is called contour plowing. Contour plowing, excuse me. Contour plowing, right? Basically what happens is they plant the crops so they block the wind, okay? So they're gonna plant it like this so the air comes across and the planting acts like a little ramp and it keeps the air from getting in between the rows and attacking the dirt, okay? So if you're looking at the side angle here in your notes, the air is coming along and it's getting ramped over each one of the plants and the bushes. So the air can't really get in between and attack the dirt and so it never gets eroded, okay? Uh, the bad way to do it is like this picture here because now the wind is going in line with the rows. It's going in the same direction as the rows. So the wind is able to get right into the dirt because there's nothing blocking it. All right? So contour plowing is where they plant the rows against the wind instead of with the wind, right? Strip farming, okay, is another method they use to kind of um, keep the ground from being eroded. Basically, what they, had, what they did is they planted trees on one uh, strip. We'll call this square. Uh, no, that might be confusing. They just planted trees on this side, and then they farmed on the other. Okay, so the roots grew into the ground on this side, where on this side, they just continued to plant your uh, traditional vegetables and fruits. Then, the next year, they switched. Okay? So you can see that they've switched it here. It's just maybe out of the screen of uh, the view, but you're looking at it in your notes, okay? The area that they're gonna now plant still has some of the roots left in it from the previous year because of the tree being planted. So you can see the roots in the ground. That's gonna keep the soil nice and firm and strong so that the wind is not gonna uh, tear it up. And then they plant trees on the other side. Roots are gonna grow and keep it strong, and then they're gonna flip. And they're, so basically, the tree roots from the previous year are keeping the ground nice and strong so that it doesn't erode. Um, let's see, oh, that's called conserving soil. The different methods that we talked about here, contour, plowing, strip farming, it's called conserving the soil, right? Deposition, contour plowing, we've talked about conserving. Conserving just means to save. You don't want to waste it, okay? We've talked about flowing water. We've talked about eroding, strip farming. Remember, the strength of the wind can really determine uh, how quickly something gets eroded. We've talked about the dust bowl. I think that's about it. If you have any questions, once again, you can contact me on Edmodo, Facebook, you can click the contact Mr. P button on my classroom website. You know, all the many different ways that I've told you to contact me. I hope you have a good day.